Well, welcome to the examples, the worked problems to our projectile um, lesson. This is the lesson where we have uh, an elevated platform, we have a projectile, and we're shooting it horizontally. So we're not shooting it up or down, just straight off, and we're concerned about how far does it go, how long does it take, and when it hits the ground, what a great vector. What is the final velocity? So that's the sort of thing we'll be looking at. Now this comes from the simulation. This is just a really basic um, problem of if the uh, projectile is f uh, four meters above the plane and the initial velocity is six, then <clears throat> how long will it be before it hits the ground? Well, we're, I hope you're prepared to consider this problem uh, as a combination of a vertical and horizontal. Now horizontally, that initial velocity of 6, it's all horizontal. So the velocity vector starts out completely horizontal, but as it uh, progresses, the horizontal component remains at 6 because as we've seen there's no uh, force that's acting in its direction. Uh, the only force going on is gravity, it's straight down, it's at a right angle, so there's no component of gravity that's acting horizontally and so the horizontal component just remains at 6. However, gravity is accelerating it downward and so the y component begins to appear and of course that vector grows and grows and grows until we get to the final state where the horizontal component will still be 6 but the vertical component will be uh, whatever it is under the influence of gravity. So in order to figure stuff out we need to think about this vertically. So vertically, here's the situation. We have a projectile. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, four meters above the ground. Vertically, the initial velocity is zero. Okay, so that's, I'm not talking about this initial velocity. I'm talking about this one. Now I could put a little Y here, but it seems like overkill because all we're thinking about is its vertical behavior. So, but if the little y helps you, then by all means uh, use it. I undoubtedly will forget. So initially its, it's, uh, its velocity is zero, it falls for four meters, and then it hits the ground. So what do we know? Well, we know the initial velocity is zero. We know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second per second. We know that the displacement is 4. Now, is it 4 or negative 4? Well, because it's below, it's down, it's going to be negative 4. Now, this is a situation where we could have just used nothing but positive values, and we'll see how that works out, but we'll just stick to the the righteous way to do this. So we need a formula that's got initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement, and there is a form, such a formula, the incredibly handy Vf squared is V naught squared plus 2AD. So uh, what am I trying to figure out? Oh, I thought I was trying to figure out time. Oh, well, let's do that in a second. So, ha ha, in a second. Uh, the initial velocity is 0, plus 2. Now notice how the signs business works. The acceleration is negative 9.81. The displacement is negative 4. So you can see if I had made them both positive, we would have ended up at exactly the same situation. So I've got 19.6 uh, times 4, which is... So that's 
0.4, I think. So final velocity is the square root of that, which is 8.85 or 8.9 meters per second. So even though I didn't want to do that, um, we've basically figured out the uh, vertical component of the projectile when it hits the ground. Vertically, it has a speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second. So what I really wanted to figure out was the time. And if we go back to the beginning, uh, to find time if you know initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement, that could be ugly because you'd need to use the formula with the t squareds in it, which is not nice. However, our initial velocity, vertically, remember, is zero. So we can just go, all right, now again, I'll be righteous. Negative four is one half of negative 0.81. T squared. And now you can see that if I'd used positive values in both places, just ignored the fact, because everything's just going down, uh, it would have amounted to the same thing. So this is negative 4, half of that is negative 4.9, so we divide by that, and that's T squared. So T is the square root, cancel the negative signs, of 4 over 4.9. And that is 0 0.904 seconds if you wanted to go that far. So that agrees with the uh, up and down simulation where I believe the time was almost right on 0 0.90 seconds. And our horizontal simulation, you remember, there was a little short, a couple of hundreds of a second before it began to fall because it had to move to the edge of the platform. So that accounts for that little bit of difference there. All right. Well, since we've calculated the final velocity vertically, we're in a position to calculate the uh, actually the final, the actual final velocity. That is to say the the speed when it hits the ground and the angle of elevation. Sometimes this is called the angle of depression because we're, we've rotated below the horizon. So you may have to deal with that language. So let's, uh, let's do that since we have the numbers already. So here's the situation. When the projectile hits the ground, vertically its velocity is 8.8 .8 meters per second. Horizontally, it's six, more, 6 meters per second. And the resultant of those two, since they're drawn tail to tail, we just ghost in the missing sides, draw the resultant in my best form, and that's what it looks like. So what we would like to know is the length and that angle. So this is a rectangle because these are perpendicular. So if this is 8.8, .8, this side over here is 8.8. .8. So we're just thinking about this triangle in here. So let's call the velocity v. So the length of v is of course, we go 6 squared plus 8.8 .8 squared, and then that's equal to v squared. Take the square root of both sides. Now, um, just as a note of mathematical interest, no, you cannot just throw those squareds away. It does not give you the correct answer. I've got a rant about that, but this is not the time. So uh, we just have to do the math. So we have to 36 plus 
77.44 if we really feeling we want to write down that much so that's the square root of what 113.4 more or less and so that is 10.7 if we round it and then we need the angle so uh, we've got 8.8, .8, we've got 6, so the tangent of that angle is 8.8 .8 over 6, which is 1.45, I think. Actually, it's more like... Uh, it's actually more like 1.47 and so the angle is the inverse tangent of 1.47 and my calculator says this is 55.7 degrees so the angle of depression is 55.7 degrees so it's not really um, super difficult to do these kind of problems. Well, this is just a continuation of the same problem um, where we were on a platform four meters above. We kicked straight out at six meters per second. We fell to earth. Uh, and we've already determined a whole bunch of stuff. So this is asking about the range. So remember that the time of flight, time it's in the air, was 9 seconds. Basically it takes not, 0.9 seconds. It takes 0.9 seconds to fall. And the horizontal component of the velocity never changes. It starts at 6 and it stays at 6. So basically the range is just the displacement, the horizontal displacement of the object moving to the right at 6 meters per second for 0.9 seconds. So that distance, that displacement, is going to be the velocity times the time, no acceleration, so we just go 6 times 0.9 and we get 5.4 meters. So that pretty well concludes the kind of thing that you'll have to do with these problems. So we'll run through all this with uh, one more set of data. I'll try and be a little bit more efficient. And then we'll do one example where we figure out how to hit the target seven meters away. All right, this is a problem for which we did collect all the data. So we're up here, five meters. We kick the ball out at eight meters per second. Plunk. So we want to figure out the time, the range, and the final velocity. All right, so the time business, you have to think vertically. So when you're thinking vertically, you're thinking, all right, initially, by vertically, I mean we just think of a falling body. So initially, its vertical velocity was zero because all of the initial velocity was horizontal. So vertically, the initial velocity is zero, not the same as this. And it fell five meters. And it, the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second per second. So we've got that negative because it's acting down. We are dropping, so that's a displacement that's acting down. So I should actually use a negative value. But again, this is a case where because everything's going down, nothing's going to turn around, I could just make them both positive. 
So what I'd like to get out of this is the time. And the formula that links these with time is the evil v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. But it's not so bad because our initial velocity is 0. So we just have to worry about a t squared and not a t squared and a t. So our displacement is negative 5. Our acceleration is negative 9.81. And we want t squared. Again, I point out if we had coded both of these as positive values, we'd be in exactly the same position we are going to be in a moment. So this is negative 5. Half of this is negative 4.9. And we divide by that. So we get there. So that's t squared. Negatives cancel out. So t is the square root of that. And that is 1.01 seconds, remarkably close to 1. And I see that that's exactly what we got when we did the simulation. So we're on the right track. OK, so now we know that it was in the air for 1.01 seconds. So we'll just sort of remember that. Now the next thing we're going to figure out is the range. And so that's a, a matter of how far does it move horizontally. Well, horizontally, its velocity is always, whoops, not 6. It's 8 meters a second. Just recall that the horizontal component of velocity never changes. And so it will just remain at 8 meters per second. And therefore, the displacement, the range from here to here, is just going to be its velocity times the time it's in the air before it hits the ground. So we have 8 times 1, which is 8 meters. And looking at the results, we scribble down here. I have somehow, for some reason, I have 8.2. Hmm. That's not so good. Oh, I imagine the problem is again with the difference. The time on the simulation is a few hundredths longer, and therefore we're, yeah. There we go. It's all my fault for making that plat, for keeping the uh, projectile on that platform for those few hundredths of a second. Oh, well. Okay, then finally we want the final velocity. So that's, it hits the ground. We know that it's moving sideways at 8 meters per second. So we need to know how fast it's moving down. So we go back to our vertical considerations. Basically, we want to know if we drop this thing 5 meters, what will the velocity be when it hits the ground? So we've already done this in the previous example. We know that we want the final, we use the formula final velocity squared is initial velocity plus 2AD. We know all of these things. Initially, we just dropped it. Remember, thinking vertically now. So initially, it was dropped 0. And acceleration is gravity is negative 9.81, and the vertical displacement is negative 5. And again, I could have used both positive values here. So that's Vf squared. So that's going to be 98.1. So Vf is going to be very close to 10 meters a second. Let's say it's 10. Okay, so when it hits the ground vertically, it has a speed of 10. So the final velocity, which is the resultant of those two, remember these are just our mathematical concepts. Okay, and it turns out, okay, once again I try and draw a straight line. Nope, not happening. So this is a right angle triangle. 
that's the angle we're interested in. This is 8, this is 10, and V is the length of that diagonal, which will be the speed of the projectile as it hits the ground. We're not concerned about bouncing or anything like that. This is the moment at which it hits the ground. So V squared, I'll be a little nicer this time, is 8 squared plus 10 squared. So V is the square root of 64 plus 100, which is the square root of 164. So V is 12.8 meters per second. And the simulation gave us 12.6. So again, that little difference is from the time. And then we would like to know the angle. If I think about it this way, we'll call it the angle of depression. So we've got opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So that's tangent. So the tan of our angle is 10 over 8 which is what, one and a quarter, 1.25. So the angle is the inverse tan of 1.25, and my calculator says 51.3 degrees, and I wrote down from the simulation 50.7, so we're half a degree off, and again, because of our, well, what did I do? I said 10 here, it's not, it's 9.9 .9 or something like that, so I'm, being a little casual and uh, I'm paying the price. However, if you want to go through this and just recheck it and don't be so casual, I think that would we'd be pretty close to the simulated values. Well, finally, we're going to solve the problem of how fast do I have to shoot the projectile to hit a target that's seven meters away. The range is seven meters, so looking at that kind of thing. And my platform is three meters above the plane. Well, um, often when you have a problem and you're I'm not quite sure how to go about it, it's often a good idea to figure out what you can. So what can we calculate from this situation? Well, if we think vertically, as you have to do with every one of these situations, vertically, what's going on? Well, we have a projectile. Because we're kicking it horizontally, vertically, its initial velocity is zero. So in other words, they're just letting it go, and it's going to fall 3 meters. The displacement will be minus 3. And we know that the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second per second. So we've got a displacement, an acceleration, a velocity. We can figure out final velocity. We can figure out time as we have done a couple of times already. So let's, um, let's find time. So these uh, variables are linked together by this formula. If we want time, fortunately V0 is 0, so we don't have to worry about that. So negative 3 is the displacement, negative 9.81 is the acceleration and again you could, we could have just left both of those positive so we're going to have half of that is negative 4 4.9 divide so we'll have negative 3 over negative 4.9 is t squared so t is the square root of 3 divided by 4.9 and that is 0 0.78 seconds. So it falls for about three quarters of a second. Now, um, so now that we know that, 
we know how long it's in the air. So, what's our issue? We know how long it's in the air. We know it's moving to the right, and that rightward velocity is constant. So that's the key physics idea here, if you like, that when we switch back to the horizontal situation, whatever velocity it starts with, it keeps. And so the range is that velocity times the time. No acceleration, so we don't have a one-half at squared. The range is 7. The velocity we don't know, but we know that it's in the air for 0 0.78 seconds. So our velocity must be 7 divided by 0 0.78, which is 8.97 meters per second, which is awfully close to 9 meters per second. And if we look at uh, our uh, simulation, that is what we got. We got a velocity of 9 meters per second. And so there we are. Well, these are probably the almost the easiest of the projectile problems, at least the two-dimensional problems, where we have vertical and horizontal motion. But uh, even though they're not terribly difficult, they do reinforce the way of thinking that we need to solve the problem. You have to think about what's happening vertically, and we usually do that first, and then make a connection, usually f with the time variable, to what's happening horizontally. So the next simulation is um, more difficult because we're going to be launching from a platform at an angle and that is going to complicate our life quite a bit um, but we'll see how that turns out so that's the next simulation and if you want to look for that and you've lost your way in the in internet then you can go to uh, youcanlearnthis.com and you should be able to find it there from all the organization that's on that website Thank you very much. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, if you want to say thanks, then go to youcanlearnthis.com and buy me a coffee. See you next time.